the uses of bamboo are endless, from textiles to paper to food to furniture. The Chinese have developed their bamboo industry into a US $14 billion enterprise. But can Jamaica profit from this fast-growing plant? Today on Cameo, we will take a look at bamboo and wicker furniture. bamboo factory has been in operation since 1990, creating quality bamboo furniture for every room in your home. I had a chat with Chief Executive Officer John Hamilton. So that bamboo factory started 25 years ago. Um, but I came back from, I was traveling around the world after college for about a year and one in my trips I went to Thailand and in Thailand, I, saw, I was, went to a place and, and saw them cutting down the bamboo and making huts. And I thought to myself, well, this is, you know, makes sense. And we have lots of bamboo in Jamaica. When I go back to Jamaica, maybe I'll utilize the bamboo a bit more efficiently. I got enticed into working in movies, in the set design and props for a few years. And those jobs, they come and they go until you kind of wonder when the next job is coming in. I met uh, Dominic Gassez, who was also doing it. And the two of us wanted, you know, were friendly and wanted to do something together. And then we went to a party and saw some furniture. And that led to the idea of maybe doing, making bamboo furniture. I had to just drive out into the country and spot bamboo growing in a hill and check a man whose bamboo is that or you know and you get one lead or one man will get say I know where some bamboo is and take you there and the next man and you know that sort of gets you onto the onto the road and after that you're kind of away and then of course the advent of cell phone because there wasn't cell phone back then nowadays people call you and say they have the bamboo ready and they cut it and do everything themselves and order it on the phone. So we've taken that process of us going to the bush and having to cut the bamboo and spend the day with a chainsaw and cooking in a big pot and everybody having a merry time. The process starts when you give the builder the design with all the particulars, dimensions, what he's to get. And then he goes out and looks in our stocks and selects all the bamboo that he would need for that. And those pieces of bamboo are cut into certain lengths that he needs. The builder has selected the bamboo for the certain job. He gives that bamboo to a scraper and he or she scrapes the bamboo with a sharp kitchen knife and removes all the outer skin. This allows the uh, bamboo to have a more uniform color in appearance and it also gives it a better treatment process so that the chemicals can penetrate the bamboo better uh, when the bamboo is scraped. So we actually have to scrape it twice but after the scraping, the bamboos are dipped in a, in a dip tank um, for a few hours and then left to dry for the rest of the day or another day or something. And after that, then they're made into furniture using hole saws, drills. It's, it's, it's low in capital because the machines we use are just basically hand drills a belt sander and, and that's it, you know, I mean, we try the bandsaw, when you chop the bamboo it, it frays, so the best way to cut a bamboo is to turn it and cut it as you're turning the bamboo you're cutting it and the best saw to cut the bamboo is like a sharp teeth saw where you have double edge that cuts the bamboo best or a hacksaw um, and you go through these saws rapidly. It's hard, you know, they're difficult to sharpen and hack saws, you just need a new blade and all that. So, you know, the, the biggest expense was really going to the bush and getting and procuring the bamboo and also treating the bamboo with buying the chemicals and whatever. And make a lot of things, but our bamboo is not quite as good as what they have in the Far East. And so you don't have the straight lines quite and the wall thickness is not you know, consistent and 
a lot of factors <clears throat> plus you have to make sure they treat the bamboo properly for bogs and stuff and for outdoor use it's limited in its um, it can be a, you know vulnerable to the elements so you have to look at you know special ways to treat the bamboo and protect it from the sun and the rain if, if being used on a veranda or something and um, well as you know it's been talked about and hyped up a lot in the press bamboo is the future and this and that and the amount of millions of dollars other countries make out of their bamboo and stuff and why can't Jamaica make the same so I don't think it's necessarily dying it's a little bit in it, it's actually in its infancy still although we've been in it business for 25 years pioneering it really um, there are a number of people showing interest I'm, um, there was one other furniture place but they got special funding and they no longer doing it but um, you know the charcoal business with bamboo and there's other little products that they can use um, with bamboo that other people are looking to do bamboo shoots for eat for food and stuff um, we'll see right in fact this morning some people came by that want to lease some land from me in right next to us to do um, bamboo business making charcoal amongst other things and utilizing the bamboo in energy um, so we're trying to encourage that and maybe give them some land so that they can um, it'll be a sort of bamboo mecca right here mm -hmm. well it's difficult to when you're coming up with a business plan and the concept and the idea and everything you never really know what you're going into fully so it's, it's, it's one thing making up a business plan, and another thing actually executing it uh, successfully. Uh, and all the pitfalls and all the things that come along that you never really accounted for in the first place. So you have to be cautious of that and build that into your um, business plan. Um, also the market and the fickle market and you know, what, what is, um, if you have, uh, you know an outlet that is going to take your things to start with or if you have to make it all and then go to the market with your product and then try to flog it you know which we did basically um, it's not easy and but you know I could probably do better and get more salespeople on the road out there marketing it um, but that's what you got to do go from you know that's what we had to do go from hotel to hotel knocking on doors you know and a lot of these big hotels you think they're coming in to buy furniture you know I remember when we first came here all Jam Pro bought us all the producers together and the executives toured uh, this sort of um, conference this, this hall of all these products and when it came to ours they loved it and they said oh yes you've got a call back come to the hotel in the grill and whatever and we want to see more of your products and set up a room and all this but at the end of the day they went foreign and brought in their furniture and they never used local really for us. Um, so, you know, they have the Dominican Republic or Mexico or whatever doing. And they use a standard thing in their hotel, especially light chains of hotel. They, they use a standard thing, which is not, you know, we're not the standard, we're uh, special boutique hotel type things. But then, when you do have a boutique hotel that buys from you, Yes, you know, utilize the, the, the internet and the, and the marketing tools in that respect. You know, they can get a lot of mileage from that. And, you know, I did it on piecework, farm it out, you know, do your cost carefully, get, you know, um, and have a good um, Accounting knowledge, don't it's, it's not just an idea and something like that, the business sense and your accounts need to be kept in order from day one and, and looked after carefully. You can easily get carried away in your production and running around the place selling and making and you're actually the more you make the more you lose. So you have to have your figures, you have to have your that side well pat well pat down. Yeah. Um, well, we're hoping to um, have these other company close to us now, 
So we'll see what that takes us into that realm, um, utilizing the bamboo, charcoal, making energy, using the energy and treating the bamboo um, in heating and all sorts of things. Um, trying to find some funds to just increase the, the marketing aspect and the, the internet and the website. Still, as our, our catalog is so much better than our website that if people knew really what we did, I think we'd get more sales. And everyone sees us and everyone sees our products, they all go, wow, you must be making money and boy, you can sell this and you know, aren't you guys rolling in it, you know, because you have such a good thing. And, well, you know, I didn't know this existed. Wow, this is fantastic, you know? So it's really to get the word out and promote it. That will lead to further sales. And Horace Thomas, owner of Unique Wicker Works, talks to us about the business of wicker products. Wicker is a woven fiber formed into a rigid material, usually used for baskets or furniture. The plant used is found in St. Mary, St. Anne, St. Catherine and Westmoreland. The terrain is often difficult to reach and hazardous. It grew up in mountains, you know, but it preferably like, it, it like, um, Cool climate, but it also can bear in sun. Vines are used for tying and binding in furniture making or basketry. In order for the vines to be used, the outer layer needs to be stripped and dried. We gather it in bungle and then bring it to my location. That's my shop here. I have a little machine around the side of the shop which I strip it out, put it in the sun, sun dries it, and then water, and then so on, chairs and baskets. And... I make headboards, I make entertainment stand, dining table, I make hats, I make even ring, yeah? I make bracelets. People, people from all walks of life love wicker, you know. Every nation loves wicker. Dave sells his products to both tourists and locals. His website, DaveCustomWicker.com, gives him an edge for international orders. But the smaller stuff now, I like to sell to the tourists because the tourists I'm like to take the souvenirs and some of the The smaller things like the basket and stuff, like the tourists are more buy them, but like the chairs and stuff is like native people, mostly patronize the chairs and stuff. Selling about 200 pieces a year, low costs of inputs and prices ranging from $2,000 to $150,000, Dave Custom Wicker turns a profit every single year. Well, these things have its season, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, it have its season. When is the season time? Well, like the tourist season? Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we do. We, we do, do all right. Yes, like coming up, the spring break coming up now. problem I have sometimes when I don't take advance from customer. Sometimes I have a little problem because when I make the stuff, some people sometimes they don't turn out. But after a time it it turns out to be sweet because we get to sell it otherwise. The lesson I learned from business, it teach me to be patient. Because this work it is it, it, it's fit. You have to have fit, strong fit. If you don't have the fit, you can you can do the work. For example, I make this chair. I don't guarantee someone gonna buy it. We just make it. But the fit tell me that somebody going to buy it. And somebody buy it. So all my life is just fit I work with. We sit here the other day and uh, a gentleman just come in, one customer, 60, 60 chairs. We never knew he was coming. So that one customer now, it like it gave me 20 customers. So the work is just the fit. Oh yeah, we like to get a contract with the hotels so we can produce more chairs for them and tables. You know? Yeah. Say to the youth, them, it's good to learn a skill. 
because when you have a skill, you're more grounded. Yeah, you're more grounded in life when you have a skill and you keep it out of trouble. Yeah, and them said by the set of your brow, that's how you eat bread, you know. So hard work is good for the soul. Alton Watts of Modern Woodcraft Limited talks to us about making wood furniture products, challenges in the industry, and his business. Modern Woodcraft started in 1979. That was a period when a lot of manufacturers um, were closing their business and uh, migrating. So we entered the manufacturing business at that point, uh, manufacturing um, furniture for homes, offices. We specialize in wooden product. That is, we use uh, mahogany, cedar, um, poplar, and wood of that nature. We do not use super board or baguettes. If you see in the tagline, we make our products from real wood. 40% of what we do is in kitchen and fixtures, comprising closets um, along that line. And then you have wooden and upholstered furniture, as the other 60%, as well as office desk and chairs. Those days, if you had $10,000 to start a business, there was a whole lot of money. $10,000 then is like $10 million now. Because I remember a machine that we bought for probably about $250. Then, it's probably about $150,000 for it now. But we started quite humble with just about three machines and, and um, five workers and um, continued over the period. Selection of lumber is very important because that will guide what color you are going to, to put onto it. You have to know the grain of the wood depending on what your customer is asking for. Um, you would like to know that the grain run in, in a similar direction not some going that way and some going this way. You have to make sure the lumber is cured. Then you, you send those lumber to a rough cut department where they are cut to the size of which you're going to use. Then it moves from the rough cut department to a finished cut department, which is final cut. Job is squared, sanded, and whatever mortise and tenon that you have to cut and then it is passed on to assembling department from the polishing then, or the upholstering for that matter, if it's the upholstering furniture. Then you will talk about um, the quality control to make sure that it, it is up to standard and to the customer's expectation. The number of persons you have, depending on the season. Going towards Christmas, you know, you will have extra, but um, January to September, it is always um, low. Um, the good old days, we used to have up to, up to 60 people working here. But this is not the case now because of um, how the economy is going. We find that these days, the customers that we are getting in now are those who have been sent here by their parents. They, when they were children, their parents bought from us. So they'll be coming now and say, you build my bedroom set when my mother or my parents move into this new house or something like that. So they are moving out and they get their product from us. It, it takes a lot out of you to, first of all, interpret what the customer wants. Most customers have an idea what they want, but they can't tell you how. So you have to interpret that, then convert that in drawing for them to understand and then you proceed to make it. It's not, a, not an easy task. 
if you're going to cut some board and knead it together, a different story. But if you are doing good quality furniture, it's an art. The bulk of it is imported material because right now, mahogany has become so expensive that the demand, people want, want it, but the price is so expensive. So the bulk of what we use now is poplar wood, which is imported or cedar, which is local. You have to know the business that you are going into. And you have to love it. You have to give it attention. Just like how you would give attention to a, a family member. Um, you have to remember the people you serve, which is our customer. As a business is never static, static. And one always has to be finding ways of innovating and improving. Um, but one has to um, marry that with the economic climate that we are in. If you are going to buy some machine now, you have to ensure that you can get the volume of business to pay back for that machine. You have to ensure that the capital is available. So although we have plans to go forward, we have to gauge it in keeping with the economy and the experience that we have had both in the 70s, 80s and 90s. And that's it for Cameo this week. We've taken a glimpse into bamboo and wicker furniture, all made in Jamaica. I've been your host, Amita Vasad Webb.